Right, I'm just recording it to make sure it's recorded. So new technology, never done this before. And I'm here today with my lovely, uh, lovely co-coach Marie Hookroft, who, or Marie Davis as you might know her. Um, and she works with me at bedandbreakfastcoach.com. She was a client to begin with for a couple of years and then she joined me on my team and she now coaches our clients with me um, on the Monday calls. So. Um, my name is Yvonne Halling, as I said, um, and Marie, I'll let you introduce yourself in a second. Um, I have been helping B&B owners uh, for the past six years, since, since 2013, when I was still running my B&B in France. Um, I've been helping them to create more income in their business, more free time, more fun, um, and more bookings, and more direct bookings to reduce their commissions to OTAs, and just generally grow their business in a way that works for them in their way so that suits their personality and what they like to do. We've been doing this work now, as I say, for a little over six years, and we've helped hundreds of people all over the world to adopt this new philosophy, if you like, of um, taking control of your business in a way that, and making the business work in the way that you want it to work, rather than being kind of beholden to third parties or anybody else's view on how it should be done or anybody else's advice. Uh, we have a system and a process to do this, which I'm going to share with you in a minute. So Marie, why don't you just take a couple of minutes to introduce yourself to the listeners? Uh, hi, I think of myself as Marie Davies because right. I was that for so long. Uh, remarried a few years ago. So Heckroth, uh, I think my Facebook name is Heckroth on there. Uh, I've been running my, this is 30 years for me. I started in 1989 uh, with two rooms and one shared bath in a different house than I'm in now. Uh, within a few years, the business quickly outgrew that house, bought the biggest house I could get. In, and now I have um, six rooms. The seventh will come on in a couple months and room for two more uh, when the last of the renovations are done. So um, I've been working with Avon since 2016. And then uh, the last year and a half or so, uh, been co-teaching with her uh, this course and it really it has worked for me um, I tried everything I tried a bunch of things and then I finally uh, tried Avon <laughs> and um, and that was the shot that I needed and uh, and it's not a quick fix kind of thing it's a process to be worked at all the time um, I still use all the processes and, um, and still continue to grow despite the massive Airbnb presence in my city. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri in the USA, by the way. Um, so despite that, I still, two months this year, I've had uh, one broke the record. February was my best February in 30 years. <laughs> and April was my second best April ever. Uh, just, again, despite, you know, what some fear Airbnb I, I embrace them. They, they, they take the clients that I don't want um, is how I see it. So the people only booking for a price. So it's a different mindset um, working with them. And then even the other OTAs, it's, um, it's the, it's, and, and Yvonne will teach you all that and show you all that. So, but anyway, that's a lot all about right. me. <laughs> okay. Thank, thanks very much. We've got uh, Tatiana on, we've got David, we've got Nikki, we've got Amy. So um, thanks for joining us live. Um, if you're not watching this live and you're watching the replay, then do a hashtag replay. And if you have questions as we go along, please do put them questions in the Facebook page in, in the comments below and we'll answer your questions best we can. And if you're watching the replay and you have a question, then tag me, tag Marie, and we will come back and answer your questions later. So um, the reason for this live stream today is really, uh, um, well, there's several things actually. First of all, I just wanna kind of dispel some myths that what people think we do here at Bed and Breakfast Coach or what people think I do or who I am and what I represent. I'm also going to, um, tell you what we really do <laughs> so i'm going to give you the process on, on how we help clients to live the business live the life and have the business that they want um, in this beautiful industry called um hospitality um, i'm going to show you i'm going to share with you a little bit uh about you know what how what what results that we've helped clients to achieve and what you could achieve in your way on your terms for your particular situation because no one size fits all um, I'm going to tell you why you need to take some action now, if indeed this is the right time for you. I'm going to uh, give you the opportunity to do that, of course. 
And then at the end of the call, I'm going to give you five clear steps to take that anybody can take without investing any time or money in anything. Just five simple things that you can do to improve your situation, pretty much solve a lot of the challenges that you may be facing right now. And they're, they're very, very easy to do. So stick around to the end so that I can share those with you. So um, thanks for your intro, Marie. Um, it's lovely to have you here, as always. What people think that I do, and I've heard this uh, from various sources uh, over the past couple of weeks, uh, uh, people have said that I um, represent a particular software company and I take commission and I push that on people so that I can get commission. We don't do that here. We don't represent any particular reservation system, any particular channel manager, any particular um, uh, CRM system or email marketing system. We do have our preferred systems, of course, who doesn't? But we don't force anybody to change to our system because we get commission. That's not how we work here. What we do is we give you the structure um, in, order, in order for you to put it into place in your business based on your guests, your location, what you want to achieve. And then you kind of hang your business, if you like, on the structure. We will make recommendations and we do teach on particular pieces of technology, but we take no commissions for any of it. So I just want to dispel that myth to start with, because we are not affiliated with any technology. That is not what we do. So what do we really do? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> well, it's kind of a little bit like, quite a lot of tactical stuff and strategic stuff. There's also what I would call a psychological element to this as well. And you have to have, or you have to be aware of the two. I think you have to have the two in your business. So the first thing, let's, let's take it step by step on the, on the um, strategic and tactical stuff. And then I'll add in the psychological stuff and why it matters as we go through. And Marie, please do chip in with anything that you want to say, because I'd love to get your take on it as well. So the first thing that we do is we determine your strategy. And whether you're new or established, if you aren't making the money that you want to make, and if you aren't attracting the guests that you want to attract, and you're frustrated with maybe negative reviews or competition from Airbnb, there's just one thing that you haven't nailed. And that is your message to the particular target market that you specifically want to welcome, you specifically want to serve. And this is very, very common in this industry. And we see this a lot. I think you'll agree with, with me, Marie. We still see this a lot. People are trying to appeal to everybody. And when you're doing that, you're really being a generalist. And it's very difficult to market to anybody online when you don't know who you're talking to. You can put posts up and you can put um, blog posts up or you can put any amount of content out there. But if it's not speaking to a particular type of guest with particular interests that, that would love to come to your place because of what you represent and what you have going on, then it's going to be very, very hard to differentiate yourself. And what happens is that people go on the online travel agents because they haven't done that. They haven't worked that out. And I see this a lot with newbies. I mean, quite, there's quite a lot of newbies in this, in this group right now. I would say that uh, over the past month or so, the ratio of newbies to establish is about 90 to 1, 90% oh, right. to 10%, which is quite, um, quite a shift, I think, than, than how it used to be. So... Um, the first thing that we do is we help you to craft a message for your particular guest. Who do you want to serve? At what price point? How can you position yourself apart from the crowd? Because you, you never, in this business right now, it's even more crucial to become a specialist. Because there are so many commodity businesses out there, so many commodity b and -Bs. Um, Marie, I think you, you coined a phrase yesterday when we were talking. What was it you said? 
Oh, meat market, bed and breakfast. Meat market, bed and breakfast. Yeah, and that's really what the Airbnbs are, right? They're like yes. in, out, get the money, turn it around in as quick as time possible, and then get the next people in and just keep churning and churning and churning. You can't afford to be like that. And I, I know that you're probably not doing that anyway, unless you're an Airbnb person. But that's not to say all Airbnb people are like that. But that is the general kind of principle for commodity b and B's. It's, it's about getting anybody and everybody at any price and as many of them as possible so that you can go on, enjoy your life or do something else. And that's become more and more difficult over the past couple of years because there's so many of them out there like that. There's so many b and B's that do that in the marketplace. And they're all on booking.com and Airbnb and wherever on the online travel agents using them, uh, using the online travel agents as their main marketing tool when there's nothing to differentiate you from anybody else on those platforms. So the first thing you have to do is you have to get really clear on who you want to market to, who you want to welcome, who you want to serve, who you enjoy talking to because of who you are, where you're located and what you offer. Now that doesn't mean that you have to turn anybody away and it doesn't mean that you have to eliminate other groups of people. You can have several groups of people that you love to welcome. You must have a message that speaks to those people so that when we see you online and I, if I'm your target guest and I see you online then, and I read what you've put on your homepage on your website or I read what you've put on your Facebook page, then I know who you are and I know whether you're right for me or not. And that's what people are looking for right now. Because as I just said, there are so many, so many meat market or commodity b and B's out there that um, you know there's just too much competition in that place you, you just have to rise above that and the way you do that is to get clear on your strategy and Marie, Marie have you got anything to say about that yeah for me um, and I think if you're especially if you're starting out new maybe you do need to take uh, for me it wasn't I mean I struggled with this for months when I first took Yvonne's class who was my I, I couldn't pin it down but I but I began to realize who I didn't want and that's how I got to where I wanted. So if you're struggling with that, especially if you've had guests for a period of years, think back on those people that you didn't want. Was it weddings? Was it groups? Was it, you know, whatever. Um, children. <laughs> I, children, yeah. I stopped taking children. Well, I ha when I started this, I had one, and then I went on to have four more. <laughs> <laughs> but once I got grown, I just, like, I, I, I don't didn't feel compelled to take them because I didn't have little ones around anymore. So I that was, I didn't want families anymore. Um, so it's, it's, it was as much about who I didn't want is how I honed in on who I did want. So. Yeah. And it, it's a process, isn't it? It, it doesn't happen yeah. overnight. It, it's like you say, it took you a while to get that. And it takes most people a while to get that because there's a fear that if you kind of identify a particular group, then, you know, you're going to lose guests, but the opposite is true because once you can, once you can hone in on a particular guest needs, then you become that go-to B and B for those people for your area. And, yeah, and the I read so many stories on the two Facebook groups I'm on, B and B ones uh, about problem get that went away. That literally went away. I, I got people I didn't click with, um, but I know I it's been years since I've had problem guests. Um, so sure, you're going to lose people, but you're going to lose the people you don't want. And that's, I, I consider that a good thing. So yeah, right. Because you know, this is your, this is your business, right? And it's your life and you get to choose. All right. Um, hi to every, hi to everybody who's joined. Do we have any questions? Can you see anything? Tatiana's got one. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Just a question. Should I decide who my audio guest is immediately um, on the homepage or in the about? Uh, Tatiana, you haven't started yet, have you? You're in the kind of planning stages of your retreat in Italy, right? I, this is the best time to start thinking about who your product is going to be for. Because if, it's more difficult, I think, for established people because they're used to taking everybody and everybody and it's hard. It's harder to like, make that choice to focus on a particular group. But if you're just starting out, it's even easier to do this. This is the time to do it. So that you're setting off on the right foot and setting yourself up for success from the get-go. 
So definitely think about that before you you start opening. So many people like invest in a in a beautiful property. I you know I pretty much did this as well because I was doing it as a hobby and I didn't know about this stuff. You know when I set, started in two thousand. But so many people these days. And just before I say that, we didn't have the internet back in two thousand, so it didn't matter. It didn't matter, did it? Really, in the old days, you can just because you couldn't choose, right? But now you can. And so because you can choose, you need to choose who you're going to welcome. But when you've been like taking people for a long period of time, you've been welcoming anybody and everybody, it's more difficult to, I find actually with experience with clients, that it's more difficult for them to hone in on it because it's the fear of loss, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing that you, do, you really need to do, what we do in our program and in our coaching program is we help you to nail a strategy and then we craft, help you to craft a message and then that goes out into cyberspace, all around cyberspace, so that people who meet you online will know who you are immediately and your message will call them to you, like it's like calling them to you, if you like, rather than just being a, a jack of all trades. You need to be specialists because the other thing about that is that you can put your prices up because you're not in competition with anybody else. You can charge higher prices. You can charge premium prices when you are um, when you're more of a specialist and you're serving a particular market because there's there's you really take yourself out of the competitive arena. And I think that's what's happened to you, isn't it, Marie? Because with all of that competition from Airbnb, they you know how many how many Airbnbs have you got in your area now? Pushing 2,000. And how many were they like a few years ago? Uh, 300 just four years ago. And now there's 2,000. And now and you've just had your best February ever and the best April since? Um, the early 90s. The early 90s. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's incredible, really. I mean, we laugh. We, we, we laugh. But, you know, this has been a process, right? We, we didn't arrive here like overnight. Well, no, uh, but that, that supports what you just said in that raising, I, I, I felt this collective fear of, oh my God, if I raise my prices, people won't book. That's not, that's not what happens. You get the, the guests that you want. Um, I wrote a blog about, you know, people keep asking me how Airbnb has impacted me. It hasn't. It's taken all those problem people who book strictly on price. And that, for me, is certainly not my ideal guest. That's not who I want. I want people who are booking the historical experience uh, the bed, the true bed and breakfast experience, and you can charge more for that. And so if, if that little, oh my God, I can't do that because nobody will book went through your brain just now. It, it's, it's a, it's a, re, it's a reasonable fear, but it's not a valid fear. It, 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 it's certainly not from my experience. Right. I keep right. having better and better years um, so yeah, over the last, that. yeah. This, despite the Airbnb thing. Despite the, the massive explosion of Airbnbs here. So to almost tenfold in, in those years and hasn't hurt me. So. Good. Okay. So once you've got your strategy, do you have any questions on this? Let me just check here. Okay. Tatiana wants clarity on, yeah, on, on the homepage, on the homepage. That's where you need to put it. So and I would if, phrase, yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just oh, saying just, welcome if you just joined us. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. uh, so, Tatiana, it's something on we welcome and then list the ideal guests. So, you know, we welcome adults, we welcome romantic, whatever, you know, just whatever it is your, your, um, I've not seen your, your, uh, website yet or anything, but it, whatever you are, the crowd you're going for, put that in there. We especially welcome or we welcome and then fill in the blank. And uh, when, if it resonates with someone, they'll, they'll, look, they'll look further in book. Right, right, yeah. So put it out front, basically, is what we're saying. Just, you know, set your stall out, out front. Don't hide it, don't hide it. Yeah. All right, so when you've got your strategy nailed and you've got your head around that, because there's a bit of psychological stuff going on there as well, we then help you to deliver on that promise that you made online for those particular guests on the ground at your property every single time and that means how you show up what your check-in times are what your breakfast times are how you deal with your guests who you've got on your team and I recommend this is a big thorny subject um, getting some cleaning help right 
Do you want to talk about that, Marie? (laughs) It is not a badge of honor, as I used to think, to admit to I do everything. It, I used to think I was some sort of superhero and what it, when I showed up to guess I was tired, I was always, my mind was elsewhere of all the 8,000 things I had to do instead of greeting them uh, leisurely um, on and on. So n- dispel that one too. That and, and if you, you can't afford not to hire some help. And so I've got cleaning help. I've got, I send my outsource, my laundry um, and uh, this summer finally lawn care. So uh, that frees me up to uh, show up and to market to those ideal guests and to have fun. I've been having fun in my sewing room lately. (laughs) So it it, it frees you up to do the important things. Anybody, and it's not disparaging to anybody that does blue collar work, but anybody can mow, launder, or clean. Only you can run your business. And that's... um, if you learn anything from today, it's that one. You, you've got to be in charge of that and delegate those other tasks because you can't do it all or you'll be working 20 hour days, day in, day out. And that's, doesn't make anybody happy. So. Yeah. And it's, it's a difficult one. Again, it's a psychological thing that I don't have enough guests. So therefore I haven't, I'm not making enough money. So therefore I can't hire any help. That's usually the thinking process that, uh, that, that occurs Um, but actually you're never going to get any more guests while you have got, and you're never going to have the money to pay for help until you actually take the leap of faith and hire some help because all of the time that you're working in your business, which is doing the cleaning and the laundry, no matter how much you love cleaning and laundry, you're not spending your time on the things that matter. As Marie said, the things that matter are the things that encourage guests to come that attract guests so that's the marketing how you show up as well how you show up is crucially important for your uh, for your business and that's what we teach in the structure section of the program because there's too many b&b owners out there right now and i know you're probably not one of them but i'm just going to say this anyway there's a lot of them that are tired a lot of them are tired They've been beaten down over the last couple of years, last few years, probably last 10 years, if I'm honest, by the online travel agents who've completely changed the playing field and they, they're un- unable or un- unwilling to learn how to cope with the new landscape in the online world. And there's a lot of people selling up because they've just tired. When guests arrive at your property, you cannot be tired. You must do what you need to do to make sure that you are taking good care of yourself so that when you show up, you look like a million dollars every single time. And no matter what else is going on in your life, no matter what problems you've got going on in your life, you never talk about them with your guests. They're not your friends. And this is really an energetic thing, if you like, because everything that you say and do to your guests in that kind of Two seconds that they first lay eyes on you, as soon as you open the door, sets the scene for the whole experience for those guests for, the, for as long as they're with you. And you must be sure to nail it in those first couple of seconds because first impressions do count, right? And you cannot afford to be tired or to be thinking, as Marie said, head elsewhere, thinking about the million things that you have to do because you're not taking care of yourself and you haven't got any help and you're pretending that everything's okay. I'm telling you, guests feel that. They feel that energy from you and it will affect their experience that they have with you. So no matter what you've promised online, if you cannot deliver that on the ground at your property every single time, then that's going to seriously impede your progress and your business. So in structure, we take care, the structure section of our program, we take care of that. That's the second thing. Do you have anything to add to that, Marie? Oh, Amanda's here and sally Ann, and yeah. June. And June, yeah. Those are our clients. <laughs> yeah. So actually, just let me tell you this. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but June was on the call last night and she told me, I'm sure she won't mind me saying this, but she was saying, I'm not doing any cleaning anymore, Yvonne. <laughs> and I said, okay, and that's great. How do you feel about that? And she's like, oh, it's worse. 
<laughs> so I hope you don't mind me saying that, June. Yeah, she's saying, I totally agree, no more cleaning and laundry for me. Yeah, yes, Nikki's saying, I'm so tired. Yes, you cannot afford to be tired in this business, okay? You have to, you have to be on it with people. And because, you know, no one else is, basically. Everyone's tired. So stand out from the crowd. Be somebody special for them. Be somebody who's really got it handled, like you're really leading them as soon as they arrive at your property. Really let them know with your energy, the way you look, the way you talk, your smile on your face, even your eyes will show everything about you energetically to your guests. And so make sure you've got that nailed on the ground. Yeah, if you've got guests who are apologizing for asking for anything, they're sensing you're too busy, too tired, too whatever. Um, and there are going to be times, there are times, uh, if I just have one room to tidy, I don't bring the cleaners in. I, it takes me 10 minutes, but I never, ever, ever, ever let guests see me do any kind of grunt work. They see me greet them and they see me, I still love doing the food. Um, that's something I don't wish to delegate. I, I enjoy that. They see me make breakfast and that's all they see me do. Um, apart from maybe a glass of wine on the porch. So, um, and it's really shifted, um, uh, I, I use the phrase, I'm the queen here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's really shifted how they behave. I, I actually get more tips. That's it's an American thing, but I get more tips. Uh, it's more tips are left. Uh, to, um, some of my house cleaners get some. Um, it's, so those are things that I've shifted. I've shifted how I do things. I am up here and they, I can be friendly with these, with my guests, but I, um, as Yvonne said, they're not our friends, they're our clients. And um, I want that little bit of extra respect in there. So I bring it to the bring it to them that way. And I get it back. So yeah, okay. So we've got quite a lot of comments on this. A um, couple of people saying that they're tired. Pat saying that she's been burning out after being unhealthy for the past few months. I'm back and ready to grow. Good for you, Pat. Good for you. I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, yeah, I used to be, be proud of saying I, as opposed to burning the candle at both ends, I broke the candle in half and I'm burning four ends. That's nothing to be proud of. So um, get get the help. It, it, it was very key and it's not as expensive as we all seem to assume it would be. So It's just getting over the fear, isn't it? The psychological aspect of, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm actually you know, the letting go of it as well, the letting go of, can anybody do it as well as me? Well, if you train them properly, yes, they can. And, you know, as, as Marie said, with no disrespect, you know, you can hire people for much lower money than you're going to generate when you get out of that, when you get out your head out of the toilet, so to speak, and you start, you know, doing the work that you're supposed to do, which is marketing your business and being with your guests, like really being with them. Mm -hmm. You can, and we cover all of that in the structure section. So what we do next is we, we, in, we install three crucial systems into your business. And this is really kind of the meat and potatoes of our, of our work, where we help you to create an upselling system so that guests spend more with you, because they will, if you give them the opportunity to. Um, I see Amanda's on the call as well. So um, yeah. Amanda's probably got something to say about this. And I know you have. It's just amazing what people will pay for uh, when, where you were giving it away for free, right? <laughs> I mean, it just never fails to amaze us, does it, with clients, Marie? I mean, we, we're, I don't know why we're always amazed, but it's just so fabulous. It's, it's all those little internal um, messages we got as children. And um, they won't like me if I don't, give this to them for free and and or they might be mad at me or whatever those messages were that we have carried into adulthood um, um that we have to get over those and for anybody who thinks oh if i you know bend over backwards and do everything that they want they'll leave me a good tip and write a good review i can't put a review on my plate need it and i didn't ever see the tips when i started charging for these extra things i was doing a they pay for them cheerfully um, and if I'm paid, I don't even think about being, uh, thanked with a tip money tip. Uh, it's not even in my head anymore. So I, I feel I got, I gave them something and I got something in return and, and we're good. Um, so that's the so. first thing. The first system is, is to have your guests spend more with you because it will delight them to do so. And it will increase your bank account. 
So it's a win-win for everybody. You, it, the way, it's the way that you present it to them and the energy with which you present it. And then, you know, some of them will say yes to it. And um, I want another one of our clients, um, my iPad's just going funny. Um, another one of our clients the other day um, had a light bulb moment around this as well. And um, amazingly, somebody just, as soon as she put it out there, in the system, within the system that we'd helped her create, somebody went and bought it and it's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let me just uh, get this, these comments. Again. So the second system, so that you've got to have an upselling system. It's, it's how you put that together, how you prepare them to buy more stuff from you, what you say to them so that they feel great buying it from you and you feel great as well. So it's, it's gotta be a reciprocal arrangement. Second system that you need to have in your business is a system to um, have those guests coming back again. So making consistent offers to your past guests is also one of our one of our major systems. So I know that a lot of people like to send out newsletters. I don't like to call them newsletters because it's kind of boring. Nobody really wants to receive a newsletter. What they do want to receive is interesting content from you that sparks their imagination and has them intrigued and curious to look further. So I know that this is also a stumbling block. It was for me when I was running my B&B. Um, but I, when I realized that if I presented it in the right way, uh, within a particular time uh, frame, then people would respond to that because it's all about your energetic leadership in this and what you say from your heart is going to be transmitted by your words and through, the, through cyberspace. Marie, can you talk about a bit about that? Both with the offers and the upsells, when I first put them out, I wasn't behind them. Energetically, I was not behind them. With my first offer, oh, nobody's going to buy the da-da-da, and nobody did. Okay. And with my upsells, when I, the first few that I put up were all things I copied from people around me that were doing, had packages and stuff, and, and nothing sold. And then about a year later, um, it, it hit me. I, I, I was giving away, I have wood burning fireplaces. I was giving those away. I started charging for those. People started buying those straight away. I'm answering somebody's question that um, I can't read that little bit. But, <laughs> okay. uh, but anyway, um, uh, people who wanted to check in early, I would, you know, I started charging for that. Uh, just services I was doing for free to be hospitable and nice and accommodating. Um, those, are, but 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 they were things I could stand behind. Were offering massage that wasn't me. Offering chocolate covered strawberries that wasn't me. And when I offered things that I that wasn't that didn't resonate with me, they did not sell. As soon as I switched gears to uh, some of these other things, boom! Uh, immediate like the other client, um, immediately within a week, uh, people were buying it. So you've got to stand behind. It's got to be something that is you resonates with you that you want to offer or or again it's energetically transmitted that you're it's not you and it won't sell it so yeah and everybody's different right so it's not you know you can charge for the x y and z and it'll work it may not you know it's got to be you as you say yeah. it's got to be you it's got to come from your heart and soul and and then that will work because it's all it's all part of what you offer and it's part of you know what you what you want to provide for people. So we have a list of about eighty five upsells to choose from in our program. And you, what you need to do is just pick something that resonates with you. Just pick one thing if you can, and then you can you know run with it and test it because all of marketing is a test anyway. So yeah. you know, and yeah, so you have to be prepared to take that risk because when you're in business. You know, there, is no, there are no guarantees. There's no guarantees at all. So that's the second system, the upselling system. And the third system that we help you to put in place is a system to attract guests yourself without relying so much on the OTAs. And what that involves is a piece of core content that you create. Again, using a particular structure, putting your energy into it, and your personality into it, which positions you again as the, the best source of information around. Because if, you, if you're going to be um, stand out from the crowd and you're going to position yourself as premium, then you have to have these digital assets, if you like, that are out there working for you online that people would enjoy reading and that they would enjoy interacting with you on. 
So we help you to create a free guide to your area or your particular expertise. Um, I mean, Marie, how many free guides have you got going on right now? Four. <laughs> <laughs> and these, yeah, because we start with one, right? We start with yeah. one. And then after that, once you get it on how to do it, how to create this, how to follow up with people, how to build a relationship, how to capture their email address and name, because nobody gets anything for free in this world there's no such thing as a free lunch so they don't pay for the free guide because it's free but the way they pay is they enter their name and email address so that you can then have the opportunity to build a relationship with them again positioning yourself with your entertaining and engaging content um, interacting with them on social media getting them back to your website to read more interact and just generally keeping the conversation going so that eventually when they think about coming to your property they'll think about booking with you because you're the only person who's doing this and I promise you that nobody yeah. else nobody else does this so um yeah so go ahead Marie you've got four well and, and the the side effect of that whole process is by the time they come to your door they know you uh, they've seen your face they've read your stuff they know my they ask uh, I, I am embarrassed to say that this one guest had so read my uh, guide on the, the history the history of my house I'd forgotten some of the stuff <laughs> <laughs> and she had read it in detail and was bringing it and like, oh, yeah, you know. Um, th th they know you when they come to the door, and that trust is what's going to keep them coming back to you over and over and over again. So that, that guide got, it, got that person to my door, and I've got them a customer for as long as I choose to be in business. And um, yeah. um, nobody else is doing this. I've, I've watched uh, several other B&Bs around me closed their doors in the last year because they were, you know, doing what everybody else was doing, which was none of this. <laughs> right, right, um, right, right. And, and they weren't open. I would, you know, say, oh, you should try this or do that. And they weren't open to any of that. And consequently, they're done. And um, uh, nobody's doing this. And if you do it, you will stand out in a very positive, professional way. Yeah, and I think um, when I when I learned how to do this, because I, you know, everything that I teach is what I did in my own B and B over a period of several years. Um, it's not theory; it's not something that I, I've sort of got from a book and then kind of and then tried it out on clients. I tried it out on myself first, and I grew my own B and B from zero to. You probably know my story. If you don't, I grew my own B and B from from making pretty much nothing to making over a hundred thousand euros a year with just four rooms and no OTAs. And it's this that I did. I want, and the reason that it was so successful so quickly, I did that in two seasons, by the way, the reason that it was so successful so quickly is because I, everything that I learned and implemented in my business, I learned from outside of the B and B world. Because the first thing that I did when I needed to grow my business, because we had lots of financial problems back in 2010 and, and I was in danger of losing my home and I had to do, I had to act fast. And so I asked lots of other B&Bs in my area, you know, what do I do? What do I do to make money? And they hadn't got a clue. They, they, didn't, they couldn't tell me anything. So the reason that I know this stuff and the reason that it works is because it's outside of the industry. So any of your conferences that you go to, any of your B&B associations that you're attached to, they will not teach you this stuff. because It's not common knowledge within the industry. It comes from outside, it's modified, it's adapted for this industry. I think that works. So um, let me see, do we have any more questions here? Right, so that's the... Third thing, your systems are crucial. Your systems are crucial. And hardly anybody in this industry has any systems at all for attracting guests, having them come back again, and having them buy more stuff. These are like timeless business principles that I didn't invent. I wish I had, but I didn't. <laughs> but every, every successful business has these, has these systems in place in some form, adapted for their industry, adapted for their business. What we've done is, is we've adapted them. I've adapted them for the B&B business. And over the years that we've been teaching this, we have upgraded our program and added more stuff as we've got more insights from clients. And, you know, Marie and I are always thinking about, you know, what, how can we simplify this? How, how can we make this better? So it's a constant well, process. Mm -hmm. And social media is changing so much. So yeah. we're, we're constantly adapting in that area arena as well. So, um, and technology is so very different when uh, the, we had a computer in 1989, but 
the internet was so new. Uh, so it's a very different business than when I started. And so, and it's changing all the time. Um, yeah, absolutely. So we adapt the program to, to um, just how YouTube is between now and just when I worked with Yvonne three years, started with her, it's different. You know, there's, yeah. so those are all things that we're always on top of. Yeah, yeah we do. It's so we're necessary. Yeah, constantly upgrading and, and changing stuff. And the fourth thing that we teach you is really like the cherry on top. It's like you don't really want to go there until you've got the, the first three, the, until you've got your strategy, your structure, and your systems in place. And then your business is like a machine. When you've got that in place, you've got like a, an engine for your business. I see so many B&Bs out there who have no engine. And that's why they have to close because they have no engine and therefore they have no levers to pull. They don't know what to do. They're kind of floundering because they've built their business on sand, on shaky foundations because they've got no engine to the business. So what we do is we help you put that engine in place with your systems, everything that I've talked about so far. And when you've got that engine in place, you can kind of relax a little bit. And then you can turn your attention to other things that you might be doing. So for, let me give you an example. Um, Kelty, our lovely client in Canada, um, she uh, has worked with us for at least two years now and she has now turned her attention she's she's fanatical about wildlife preservation and photography and her husband is a, an amazing photographer and they sell his photography at their B&B in Alberta in Canada and then but they only have three rooms and so they they had a kind of limit on the, on the, uh, the amount of money they could, they could make and they were like well what else can we do so we, between us, we came up with the idea of creating a clothing line from her husband's photography. And they are just amazing, amazing clothes and accessories from her husband's photography with wild animals, supporting wildlife preservation. So she's taken her passion for wildlife conservation and turned it into another revenue stream. And this is something that you can do after you've got your B&B &B working well, because I'm sure that you have other things that you want to do as well. And we're doing something similar with Marie. She's not doing wildlife photography, but we're doing something similar with Marie with her amazing Italian American cooking skills. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me, I visited Marie last year and her pizzas are to die for, to die for. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So do you want to say anything about that or are you okay with that? Yeah. Well, that's one extra thing. I've, I've, I've uh, got three different side revenue streams um, independent of running the bed and breakfast, but are predicated on the, the historic home that I'm in. So, um, so those are all bringing, but, but I was, didn't have time to develop that until I got the engine uh, up and running. So, um, so it's not just that I take in guests and, and rent rooms. I'm, I do a number of other things, and, uh, and 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 they're all things that I love, and that that is the key thing. You've got to be behind. You can't copy someone else just because you can't come up with something. It's got to be something that that is you're passionate about, or it won't work. In your heart, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it has Healthy to be and the wildlife, and um, it was just so perfect for her, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and as a, right. as a result of that, of course, and, and this, this is not unusual, actually, as a result of that, she's actually, um, she's actually closing her B&B. She's actually selling it and moving into, um, mo moving along with her clothing line. So mm -hmm. it's just amazing. You know, it's all about bringing, expanding yourself, isn't it? Expanding yourself and bringing your energy and your beliefs and your psychology and your, you know, your dreams and your passions to life. And once you've got that engine, you can relax. And then you can turn your attention, as Marie said, once you've got your engine, she, she then had time to, to think about, well, what else do I want to do? You know what, you know, I've been doing this 30 years, what else would I love to do? And then she's got several other income streams going on the basis of that. It's just great. And a couple more in the hopper. <laughs> yeah, a couple more in the hopper. <laughs> Why not, eh? So those are the things that we really do. We don't sell technology. We don't take commission on any technology. We have our preferred partners, of course but we don't push any technology. If you work with us, you won't need to change your reservation system. You won't need to change your channel manager. You, you, you won't need to change any of your existing technology if you don't want to. You won't have to get a new website. Some clients do want a new website when they work with us, but we don't insist on any of that. What we want to do is share with you 
guide you through the structure, the framework of a successful B&B so that you can hang your business on it in your way and operate your business to your heart's desire so that it resonates with you. It's an extension of you and your energy, your, your psychology and who you really want to serve. That's what we specialize in doing, I think, in a nutshell, would you say? Yep. Yeah, and all of the psychological stuff that goes with it. <laughs> So um, I just want to share a couple of results. If you have any questions, I think my iPad's got a bit stuck. So if you can see any other questions, Marie, that would be great. I don't. Not since uh, Ilse uh, Berzina yeah. had a question, but that was a lot. She wanted to know what sort of what we services I used to give away for free that I now charge for. Oh, so we covered that, haven't we? So, yeah. yeah. So that's so the last question that came up. So. If you have any more questions, then just feel free to pop them in the comments and we'll come to them in a moment. So what kind of results do we help clients to achieve? Well, you may have seen some testimonials from Amanda and from Jane and from Yvonne and um, various people. Uh, if you're new to this group, um, if, you're, if you're new to this um, bed and breakfast owners group, you may not have seen those. But typically clients will increase their business by 25% in one season. Now, I'm just going to say that we don't guarantee any results because when you're in business, there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees in life and there are no guarantees in business. But what I will say, based on our experience, you, you, are, you are putting yourself, let's say, in line for increasing your business by at least 25% in one season. Some clients have doubled their business in two seasons. Some clients have uh, added a 67% to their business. Some, people, some have added 44% to their business. And some people, as I say, have doubled their business in, in two seasons. It's a process. It, it's a process that takes your commitment. It takes your time and energy. Once you've got it in place, you will you have a completely different perspective on your business than you've got right now, for sure. And you will have at your fingertips, at your disposal, a system that you can replicate in any other business that you choose to go into because it's timeless business stuff. It's not rocket science. It's timeless business principles adapted for the bed and breakfast industry, for your B&B &B, in your way so that you, are, you have the business that you want. So those are some of the um, results that you can expect. So why, why am I doing this now? I believe that there's a big opportunity in the marketplace right now because of what's happened with the online travel agents and their, uh, what happened in the UK specifically, where the UK b, &B Association um, put forward some complaints to the Competitive Markets Authority, the online travel agents have been slapped down. And, and I think uh, from what comments that I've seen in the group, in, in this public group, um, bookings are down through OTAs and um, people are kind of wondering what to do next. Where shall I list next? So when you're listed with the OTAs and you're relying on them heavily for your business, then when things change, you're like a cork on the ocean. You know, you're going to be bobbed around from place to place and you won't know what to do. What I'm offering you here is the ability to build something for yourself, to build an asset for yourself that you'll be able to sell much more easily in the future. The second reason why I believe this is important is because of all of the meat market Airbnbs out there and all of the commodities out there, the market is crying out for you to step forward with your premium product, with your beautiful property and the service that you offer and to put yourself out there online. The market is crying out for that. So this is a really brilliant opportunity right now to act and to get yourself set up for, for, the, for, for the future for as long as you want that to be. I reckon this opportunity is going to be available now in the next three to five years. And we're already seeing loads of B&Bs closing down because they don't know how to navigate this new digital landscape. They don't know how to operate without, uh, without OTAs. And so when you take up, take up this challenge, and put yourself in line for becoming that go-to B&B in your area, you will win for sure. So anything else to add, Marie, before I give my five, because we're almost at the hour, but um, we can go on if people want, have questions, they want to ask something else, I'm happy to stay on. What else would you add, Marie? 
Um, I, I've experienced what Yvonne just said, that despite the um, explosion of just Airbnbs, um, and I, I'm still thriving, um, the, we had 15 traditional B&Bs a few years ago, we're down to six, um, because they didn't adapt and they opted to close their doors. Um, um, so these time-honored uh, methods work and they're not trendy, they're not flash in the pan, they're, they're, they've got substance and um, um, they work and um, they worked really well for me, so. Yeah, you, you and, and, and our clients, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. me worked really well for me as well, which, which is where I first learned how to do this. All right, so now, great. Do leave a question if you have one. And tag me or tag Marie if you need an answer, if you're watching on the replay. Let me give you five things that you can do right now. They're very simple things to do, but they are, will make a huge difference to your life. So if you've got a pen and paper, then just write them down because um, I want you to take some action. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to give you the next steps. If you feel like you really are ready for this, for a new way of running your B&B, and you feel like, like now is the time, I've had enough of trying every tactic or hack or trick out there, and I still can't make it work, and I'm still um, swamped by Airbnb competition. If you're feeling like that, then let's have a talk, let's have a chat, and let me see if we can help you. Let me see if we're a good fit. This is not a sales call, this is like a getting to know you call, because I'm very much interested in what your motivations are, and what your commitment is in as much as you want to know about me. So I, I choose, we, we choose our clients very carefully because we want to make sure that you're going to do, you're going to stay the course and do what's required so that you will get the result that you want because our reputation stands on that. I've been doing this now for six years. Marie's been with me for three years. You know, we wouldn't still be here if this didn't work. And so we have to choose our clients carefully so that we can continue to help people. So if you feel like now is the time, then I'm gonna put the link in the comments back, uh, down here so that you can book a call with me. I think I can do that, yes. Okay. Let me see if I can put that link in there. Let me just make a comment down here. Okay, HTTPS, and then I'm going to give you five things that you can take away with you in a second. Forward slash. Okay, so that's where you can that's where you go to schedule a call with me. There's a questionnaire to fill in. There's some preparation work to do before our call um, so that you know, we're both on the same page here. And um, let's just have a talk, to see if we can help you. All right, so five things. Number one, declutter your environment. <laughs> Marie's smiling because she's on a constant declutter. Declutter your environment. That means your office primarily, but also your home. If you've got a lot of stuff lying around, even if your guests don't see it, even if it's in your private area, if your environment, your personal environment, environment is cluttered and messy, that's going to trap energy in your space and it's going to hold you back and keep you stuck. You want to have free flowing energy through your property, through your physical space, both personally and uh, both privately and publicly. So declutter, there's a great book, and I think we should maybe add this to the book list um, for the clients, is um, a Japanese uh, decluttering expert called Marie Kondo. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's written loads of books on it. It's fabulous. It's all about the, the psychological energetics effects of decluttering. So uh, just tell your story about uh, your uh, decluttering campaign. <laughs> 
it, it's it's a kind well 27 years in the same house family of seven a lot of stuff has accumulated but i've been ruthless about evicting things and if my kids don't take their stuff i give it to the cleaners who have a bunch of kids between them I, but i when i move things out of the house i physically feel lighter um so i'm i'm Every day something goes, if not, ideally five things go. And it's a 10,000 square foot house, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it, it's made a huge difference. My office is dedicated to my office. There's, it's not the place where things go to hide when we have to clean up in a hurry. I have a, I've got one bedroom right now that's strictly, that's my sewing room. And that used to be another place where things went to hide when we had to clean up in a hurry. Not anymore. It's it's all my sewing, framing, crafting. It, it supports the creative side of me. That's very important to feed. Um, that's was starved for a lot of years. Um, so I've been very ruthless about it. Doesn't stay in there if it doesn't support the kitchen. Same thing. You know, if it doesn't support the activity of the room, it and I can't give it away. I donate it. You know, so it, it leaves the house somehow. And there's um, that. And then there's that lightness that you feel. Right? Yes. So. I feel yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I've lost weight. All of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Energetically, it just it just frees up your headspace. So number one is declutter your environment, clean it up, clean it up, and your office space is really, really important. Number two, tighten up your boundaries. Tighten up your business boundaries. Don't let people interrupt you when you're working, especially if it's family. And um, we had this with the client last week about constant interruptions from friends. You have to be very, very strict when you're working on your business, when you're working with us uh, on this program and you're learning new stuff, you want to really shut out everything else. You don't want people interrupting you. You don't want guests arriving early or without warning. You don't want anybody interrupting you while you're learning and concentrating on what you're doing, whether it's whatever you're doing, not necessarily working with us. But you need to have that, those boundaries firmly in place so that when you open the door to your guests, you're fully present for them and you're not thinking about something else that you haven't done. When you're working on your business, you don't want to be interrupted by guests because you're not ready for them. Tighten up your boundaries as much as you can. Just say no to some of your commitments or your perceived commitments. Say no. Number three, set aside time to recharge every day. Make sure that you're taking time out to do something for yourself every single day, even if it's just taking a nap. If you're feeling tired, you take that time for yourself. I know in the beginning I worked myself I work myself into the ground and I think we've all been there at some point because as women, you know, we're so giving and we're so concerned about others' needs, especially as mothers, which we both are, then you, you get into the habit of putting everyone else before yourself. And that, has, that habit has to break if you're going to build a business that you can rely on, that will serve you and it will serve your guests as well. You've got to break that habit of putting everybody else's needs before yours. Do you want to say anything about that, Marie? Well, obviously, um, I see Rachel um, is another client who's got a three-year-old. Yeah, three-year-old needs to be fed, you know. <laughs> and and uh, look, but but there's still if you put the structure in place, even with young children, um, it's do. I lived. I I lived to tell about it. I came out the other side. It is doable, but it was. They understood when mommy was working, they understood if I was out on the front porch, mommy was having a quiet time and do not, and I would hear them inside say, no, don't go out there, mom's out there. You know, <laughs> mommy's, at, mommy's in a quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I also had a sign over the doorbell from one o'clock to check in, do not, you know, baby sleeping, do not ring the bell. I mean, I was that out there with, this is my time. And my kids knew, um, they, they didn't have to take a nap, but they had to play in their room until that, you know, three o'clock came around again. So um, it can be done with little kids. It's, it's certainly easier now because they're all grown, but it's the intrusion of friends, of people who want me to do things for them. And um, husband wants dinner on the table every night and, you know, things like that. So that you're, you're still going to get pecked at, as I call it, but you, uh, it's awkward and it takes a while to get comfortable with saying no I say no. I do not answer the doorbell on check-in days before 4 p.m. 
And, uh, and if they call, I just say, oh, so sorry, I'll be back by four, even if I'm standing right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if that is my sacred time and nobody, but nobody gets it um, unless I choose to give it. So. Right, really, really good point. So set aside time to recharge every day and then get away, get away from the property on a regular basis and do something that you want to do, whether it's just going to another city, whether it's taking yourself off to the beach or just, just get away from your property, get away from your business on a regular basis. I personally like to go to business seminars and events. I like to learn things. It's just it, things all the time. I love to learn things. So I used to take myself off every year to a seminar. I often went to the States. I was based in France. I would take myself off and do something that I really enjoyed doing. So make sure that you're getting away because the thing is, when you're, when you're still at your property, you may be taking time off, but you're still at your property. You're still, you've still got your head in it. You, yeah. you haven't allowed the space to open up for crea creativity if you're still in it. And you'll always find something to do if you're still there. So you need to be taking yourself away so that you can give yourself some breathing space in order for the creativity juices to flow. Otherwise, you'll feel like you're tied to it like a chain, uh, like a slave, and you will start to resent it. Well, it's, it's like breathing stale air in an office. Um, it's just not good. Um, you can get uh, away. There's the diminishing returns when you don't um, take care of yourself as well. So. Absolutely. And the last thing, stop gossiping about other people. This is a human thing that we all do. I mean, I'm, I'm not holding my hand up here as the perfect model human being. But if you can become aware of when you're wasting time, wasting energy on talking about other people, making up stories that aren't true, or you don't know if they're true or not, whether or not they're true is beside the point, but stop gossiping about other people. Start talking instead about your ideas and your dreams and your things that you want to create and stop worrying about what other people are doing and talking about that. There's a really good um, quote from somebody, I can't remember who said this, but it's really appropriate. Um, Gosh, I wish I'd written it down now, but basically it goes something like um, large minds talk about ideas, medium sized minds talk about, um, I can't remember what it is, but small minds talk about other people. Don't be a small minded person. Lift yourself up from that and start talking about ideas and things that you want to make happen rather than what somebody else is talking about and interfering with your energy because what you say, what comes out of your mouth is a product of what you're thinking about and it creates your reality in the future. So if you are feeling tired and stressed out in your business, it's because you are speaking the same thoughts, uh, speaking the same words, having the same thoughts and coming at it with the same energy that you always have. If you want to move on in your business, we have to break that habit, break that pattern, stop gossiping and talking about other people. So those are my tips for you. I hope you've um, got some value from that. I hope you've enjoyed um, what we've both shared with you. Um, if you feel called to join us on our program, uh, we have some spots available at the moment. Book a call with me and we'll go through the process and see if you're a good fit for us. If you have anything else that you want to ask, tag me or Marie in the replay and we'll come and answer your questions later. Um, and I think that's all we have to say. Do you have anything to say at the end, Marie? Anything else to add? No, I'm good. Okay, good, great. Thanks very much for joining me. Sure. Okay. All right, everybody, right. going to end this now and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. All right, bye. <laughs>